This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. Palestinians break the Israeli siege on Gaza. President Bush ends a six-nation Middle East tour. Violence continues in Iraq. But is anyone paying attention to Lebanon? And who is to blame for the latest spree of assassinations? Answers to these questions and more on Link TV's Mosaic Intelligence Report. At least five people were killed and several wounded today in an explosion that destroyed cars in a Christian suburb of Beirut. The intended target was Wissam Eid, a captain in a Lebanese police intelligence unit seen as a close ally to the ruling coalition leader Saad al-Hariri. Last month, a car bomb killed the army's chief of operations, Brigadier General Francois al hajj in East Beirut. While less than two weeks ago, a car bomb aimed at a U.S. embassy vehicle killed three people and wounded 16. This week, during a nationwide labor strike over rising prices, hundreds of people staged angry protests across Lebanon, blocking roads and preventing travelers from reaching the airport. Lebanon has been without a president since the pro-Syrian Emir Lahoud stepped down at the end of his term in November of last year. Parliament is due to hold a vote on February 11th to elect a new president, but as a Lebanese friend tells me, I'll believe it when I see it. Although at first glance, the crisis in Lebanon appears to have been prompted by the failure of parliament to elect a new president. In reality, the problem goes beyond this. Lebanon has had at least 30 bombings in the last three years, many of which have been aimed at anti-Syrian politicians and journalists. Who's behind all of this? Accusations have flown all over the place. Syria leads the list of suspects, as does Israel, the US, Al-Qaeda represented by its offshoot Fath al-Islam and Hezbollah. As a result, many Lebanese believe that their country is on the brink of another civil war. Former President Amin Jmail, a key member of the Lebanon's ruling March 14th coalition, recently accused the Hezbollah-led opposition of plotting to overthrow the government. This is the demand of the Lebanese opposition. They want to change the regime in Lebanon. We consider this a coup on the Taif Agreement, a coup on the Constitution, and a coup on the National Charter. During the recent commemoration of Ashura, the holiest day in Shiite Islam, Hezbollah's leader Hassan Nasrallah took his supporters by surprise and taunted Israel by appearing in public for the first time in more than a year. If Israel launches a new war against Lebanon, we promise them a war that will change the face of the entire region, Nasrallah said. I have also noticed that recently on Hezbollah's Al Manar TV, there has been much talk and bragging about Hezbollah's ability to replenish its weapons and capabilities to levels higher than those before its war with Israel during the summer of 2006. Many members of the Lebanese ruling coalition have said publicly that these weapons are really intended to be used against them during a civil war. Meanwhile, the Bush administration has been providing the Lebanese army with new equipment and training. The latest batch of U.S. equipment arrived on December 22nd, with more expected to arrive in 2008. Initially, the U.S. sent the weapons to help the Lebanese army in its confrontation with Fath al-Islam, but many analysts believe now that the new shipments are for the anticipated civil war, something which the Lebanese public seems increasingly resigned to, with talks focused not on if, but when. I'm Jamal Dajani for the Mosaic Intelligence Report. To learn more about this program or to send us your thoughts, visit us at linktv.org slash mosaic. This program was brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. Link TV is the only U.S. television network devoted to global and national news with uncompromising documentaries and diverse cultural programs. Programs which connect you to the world.